with the holidays approaching, I am thrilled today to be talking to Dwayne Pickert. And we are going to be talking, Mr. Dwayne, about Captain William Hilton and the founding of Hilton Head Island. All of this is for authors artists and mm -hmm. afternoon tea for the Heritage Library, December 10th. I'm super excited. Thank you for joining no, us today. Thank, thank and you yes, for having me. I'm already yes. Christmas shopping. I have to have one of these. Yes, well, I appreciate you buying the book. I love it. Talk <laughs> to us about what inspired you and what readers can garner from reading the book. Okay. Well, my inspiration for doing the book was, was coming up on uh, 2013. This was in 2012. And 2013 is the 350th anniversary of Captain William Hilton sailing into Port Royal Sound. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Oh. Yeah, and naming a high bluff of land on what became Hilton Island. He named that high bluff of land Hilton's Head. Okay. And the name just stuck How after that. You, what's your background? Are you a historian? Yeah. Are yeah. you just interested in local history? No, I'm a historical archeologist is my background. So I do archeology. span My specialty is the historic time period. Oh. So yeah, so I do. Um, not only archaeological excavations, but uh, historical research as well. Here around the low country? Yeah, mostly. I do some around here, but I'm mostly doing work right now in Virginia. Oh, are you really? Yes. So tell me what was intriguing about studying about William Hilton. I think for many of us, there's this enigma that surrounds him. Yeah, well, was, most people, when I talk to them about, or they ask me about the history of it, they just assume with the name Hilton that's somehow related to the uh, oh, like hotel Hilton, chain, yes. like uh -huh. Conrad Hilton and all that people associated with the uh, hotel, the Hil mm -hmm. Hilton Hotel chain. Mm -hmm. But obviously it's not the case. It's totally two different related people. And like I said, when the 350th anniversary was coming up, mm -hmm. I decided to uh, actually do a little bit more research into him. And I actually decided at that time, I was interested in actually portraying him as a living history character, Okay. which I still do. I do not only for adult groups, but mostly for school groups. I dress up as Captain Wayne Hilton and do a little presentation to give. What was his personality like? Uh, it's kind of hard to say. There's not a lot of real information available on him. Okay. I just sort of had to fill in the blanks some um, with what was going on at the time period. How did he get here? Why did he come? Why did he stay? What was important about the area to him? Well, during this time period, he, he did actually two explorations. Okay. His first exploration he did for a bunch of uh, merchants in New England who were interested in finding a new place to live. Okay. And he actually explored the area around what we call the Cape Fear area of North Carolina. Oh, he did? Okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah, some New Englanders did go try a settlement down there, and it had failed. Okay. And then the that was in 1662. And the following year, in 1663, Hilton was this is uh, so interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hilton was uh, contacted by a group of gentlemen in Barbados. Okay. In which New oh. England, New England, he was living in New England at the time, and he had a very good trade going back and forth. So obviously, he visited Barbados a lot. Was probably well known there. At this time, Barbados, small island. Yeah. It's dominated by sugar plantations. They're running out of land there. So a lot of people are interested in finding new lands to settle. So, so off to South Carolina. Yeah, so Hilton um, was commissioned to explore the area. And since the New Englanders had disparaging things to say about the Cape Fear area, they wanted him <laughs> yeah, right. to explore the area further south okay. into what was South Carolina today. And that's when he entered Port Royal Sound. And uh, as I say in my talks, he was so taken with it I that know. he decided to... Uh, right well. Right, decided to... Uh, I named this high bluff of land Hilton's Head okay. on there as a navigation marker. So oh. sa yeah, so sailors coming in to the sound could use that as a way to navigate around the shore. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's yeah. pretty interesting. So all the maps of the time period, you'll see Hilton's Head like just sticking out Yes. on there, which is the navigation marker. So this is a little tease for the event that's coming yeah. up for Heritage Library. I think that's so exciting. Yeah. And you're actually going to be there for the event yes. Yes. on December the 10th to be sharing some history. What else will you be yes. doing? Selling your book. Yes, obviously I'll have a table. The one less. <laughs> yes, I'll have a table selling my book. But I'm also going to have a, I reserved a room to do a little talk, author's chat there so people can come in. And, uh, What's it like to bring historical figures to life? Are people enthralled just... Yeah, it's interesting, um, especially, I mean, most people are enthralled by well-known people. Um, Hilton's not, As a well known. not a household name. Well, in the low country, he is for sure. Yeah, and like I said, most people don't even know that the Hilton, Hilton Head Island's named after him. Mm -hmm. I mean, people drive down William Hilton Parkway all the time and don't even give it one thought about who it's named after or anything about him. 